For the next old rule, new rule of money, I want to talk about is one of the nastiest four-letter words in most people's vocabulary, and that four-letter word is debt. And every expert will tell you, get out of debt, get out of debt, get out of debt. Those are old rules. To be up to date and with time, especially since after 1971, you've got to know today that there's both good debt and bad debt. And the reason most people are in trouble is because they have too much bad debt. And as from the example of assets versus liability, it's a very simple thing. Good debt makes you rich because it puts money in your pocket, and bad debt is bad because it takes money from your pocket. So I have a house, and I'm paying it off and all that stuff, but my house is bad debt because i got to pay for it. Good debt is debt that somebody else pays for for me and makes me rich. So if you really understand money and have a higher financial IQ and invest your time in this, your greatest asset, you'll know that you can use debt to get rich, especially today. One of the reasons you know, that uh, when you look at what happens to most people is, again, if this is an income statement, expense, asset, and liability, the reason most people are in financial trouble is they think they buy a nice house, so they buy this big house, but they have this thing called a mortgage. And nothing wrong with a mortgage, but the word mortgage, if you understand financial literacy or the definition of the word, mortgage means death, mortgage, the death of your future age. So you have to know when to use debt in, in the good process. So what happens to most people is they go to school, like they were told, they get a job, their first big line item expense is taxes because they're an employee or self-employed, and the second line item expense is called mortgage payment. So they just the money is just pouring out of their pockets this way because they have bad debt. Now, as an investor, because I took a real estate course years and years ago, and my rich dad taught me is I own a house here, and I have a mortgage for it. But every month, I don't pay for that house. My tenant, bless her soul, pays me money, and that money then pays the mortgage and all this stuff off. So I am a wealthy man because I have lots of good debt, and, the, and I get richer and richer because I use debt. If you understand tax law, debt is tax-free. It's wonderful stuff. There's another thing about knowing how to use debt to get rich. The reason most people are in trouble today in the real estate market is because they were flipping properties. They were trying to buy it and sell it for income. That puts you in another category. I buy and I hold and I use the cash flow, and cash flow is passive income, which is taxed less. So there's so many different reasons why a high financial IQ, part of your learning is to understand good debt and bad debt. If you're the old thinking, you might think all debt is bad. That is not correct. Today, you have to know good debt and bad debt. There's one more thing I think that's really important. You know, I said earlier that savers were losers. I believe, and I could be wrong, that in the near future, the debtors will be the winners. And the reason for that is, for, for example, I just bought a, an apartment house, and let's say I paid $20 million for it and I have a $20 million mortgage on it, well, if they keep devaluing the dollar, I'm going to be paying that $20 million off with dollars that are worth less and less and less. So people who have good debt become winners because after 1971, I can pay it back with junk dollars. Now, if you can understand that, you might understand why, as an in, to be a smart person, in the 21st century, you, you need to know good debt versus bad debt. That takes a little education, a little reorientation. So it is unfortunate because of 1971, when, the, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, savers became losers and debtors became winners, but debtors who have good debt. So the last thing I want to talk about debt is one of the best investments I made because I started off with no money like most people. You know, my first investment was a little $18,000 condo in Hawaii, and I made a whopping $25 a month. I didn't make much money on that deal, 
But every time I did an investment, be it real estate or business, I got smarter because experience makes you smarter. So I started with just a little $18,000 unit. I broke up my credit card. I paid the $2,000 down payment with my credit card, so it was 100% finance. Now, most experts will say you, that's stupid. You don't do that. But, I, but if you know what you're doing, you can do it. A number of years ago, I bought a $7 million uh, commercial building. I paid for it with zero down. And every month, after everything is paid for, it puts about $30,000 a month income in my pocket, or $360,000 a year for no money down. So that is the price of having a good education or a bad education. A good education is knowing the good debt versus bad debt and how debtors can win if you know what you're doing. Even in this economic environment of high volatility, because I'm basing all of my investments not on capital gains or appreciation, I base all of my investments on cash flow, how much money comes in. So even though the real estate market has crashed, I hate to say this, but in a good, it's been good for me because more people became renters all of a sudden. So my rental rates went up, my income went up, I'm paying for it with cheap dollars and things like this. So in the new rules of money, you have to know the difference between good debt and bad debt and why savers are losers and debtors are winners.